Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Now here's naturalist Dave Wilson with a conversation about box turtles. My guest today is Scott Smith. Scott has worked for the Maryland Department of Natural Resources for 26 years and is a wildlife ecologist for DNR's Natural Heritage Program. Scott currently conducts applied research and conservation efforts for reptiles and amphibians. He has a bachelor's degree in natural resources from the University of Rhode Island and a master's in wildlife management from Frostburg State University. He lives on the eastern shore in Caroline County. Today, we're going to t- discuss a little bit about the lives and status of box turtles on Delmarva. Scott, I want to start with the basics here. What is a box turtle and how is it different from other turtles? Well, first, Dave, I'd like to thank you for having me here. Um, the box turtle is called a box turtle because its body is kind of like a box. It has this high dome shell, I and mean, basically it's a box with, with legs, a long neck, and a tail. Um, it has a bottom shell, which we call the plastron, that is hinged, so it's able to close up its shell really, really tight, like closing up a box really, really tight when it's threatened by any type of predator. Um, this is our only truly terrestrial turtle in Maryland, one of, one of the 19 turtle species we have, and it spends the majority of its time on land, whereas all the other turtles spend the majority of their time in water. Um, it has an interestingly colored shell. It's, um, it's very cryptically colored um, to fit in with the forest habitats it lives in. It's a mixture of yellows and oranges and reds and greens and browns and blacks. Um, if you think about light coming into a, a, a closed canopy forest through little gaps in the trees and in, in the leaves, and that sunlight hits the ground in a little dot pattern, that's kind of what their, their, uh, their shell is designed to uh, help them hide in that type of habitat. Can you tell me a little bit about what turtles eat or, or maybe some of the habitat requirements they have as well? So we think of the box turtle as a uh, turtle of open woodlands and fields. Uh, it depends on the time of year and where they are in their life, what habitat they use. And so they, they would overwinter um, in, uh, in the ground, actually underneath the forest litter, underneath the leaf litter and the duff in a forest floor. And then they'd come out in the spring, uh, feed on things like mushrooms or fungi. Um, and really they're an opportunistic feeder. They'll feed on pretty much anything that's, that's around, whether they're berries, fruits, nuts, seeds, uh, insects, insect larvae, uh, even uh, small mammals, and uh, particularly baby small mammals, and frogs and salamanders, and, and even a dead fish or two. So they'll feed on some, some carrion. Um, but they, they use the forested areas and also forest um, pasture field ecotones, these, these edge habitats, because they need that open sun. And also they lay their eggs in those open areas, whether they're someone's suburban backyard, a pasture, a hay field, an old field. Uh, so all those habitats are important and they cover uh, pretty good ground. They have a, a home range of about 40 acres per turtle. How old do box turtles get? Well, surprisingly, there's one published account of a turtle getting to be 138 years old, which is really phenomenal. Um, Probably it's more realistic that they get 50 to 80 years old. And Lucille Stickle, who's kind of a famous uh, person in the box turtle world, she worked in here in Maryland at the Patuxent Wildlife Research Center over in Laurel in Prince George's County. And she did a famous study that started back in the 60s. And, uh, and that study has since been carried on by uh, folks who, who uh, followed up on her work. So there's an over 50-year study on box turtles there. And they found that actually the majority of the box turtles in a population only live 25 to 35 years, and it's just those rare uh, old-timers who make it somewhere between 50 and 80 years. What are some of the threats that they face? Well, like most other wildlife, one of the big threats they face is habitat destruction and habitat fragmentation. The fragmentation, particularly by roads. There's also illegal commercial collection for the pet trade in this species. Uh, There is an increasing threat from disease, which I'll talk about again in a minute. Um, Road mortality is very big. Even forest fires in some areas can cause real problems, as well as contaminants and even climate change. Do you have a sense of the status of box turtles in Maryland? Well, the the, um, work done at Patuxent National Wildlife Research Center is one of the longest uh, data sets for Bog, uh, excuse me, for box turtles anywhere, and it's shown that the population there has declined dramatically. Um, we just finished here in Maryland our Maryland Amphibian and Reptile Atlas project, which of course, Dave, you were heavily involved with here in Worcester County. And um, that data is interesting. It shows that box turtles are still the most common turtle in Maryland as far as their distribution. They're found in every county in the state. 
um, and, and they're still everywhere. But there is a sense, and it's an anecdotal sense, that they've declined everywhere. Can you talk a little bit about ranavirus? I know ranavirus, of course, has affected frogs, but it's affected turtles as well. Yeah, really, there's three big species that ranavirus, which is a frog virus, uh, has affected. Uh, wood frogs and spotted salamanders, their larvae, and the one turtle that's really being impacted heavily by it is the eastern box turtle. In fact, it's really the one species that I have the most concern about because um, the frogs and salamanders are able to produce lots and lots of eggs. Box turtles really don't reproduce like that. They, they only lay uh, one clutch a year and it's, it's not very many eggs. And, and uh, predators get, get those, most of those nests. So anything that's impacting adult box turtles uh, is of concern. It's also possible that ranavirus has changed. It's a very rare virus because it started in fish, it jumped to amphibians, and then jumped to turtles. Um, basically cold-blooded animals. We don't see that in most diseases. Most diseases are just in mammals, or just in birds, or just in fish. And so it's a very um, interesting and potentially uh, deadly disease. What can folks do to protect box turtles? Well, first and foremost is to protect habitat. And by habitat, I mean large contiguous areas of forest and field. Uh, if a, a single turtle has a home range of over 40 acres and we have lots of overlapping um, home ranges, really uh, the bigger the better, just some landscape conservation. Um, on your own properties, or, or let's say you're out there walking somewhere, you see one, it's great to observe it, but just leave it alone. If it's in the wild, don't collect it, leave it alone. Um, and if you see one crossing a road, which is a source of a lot of mortality, if it's safe for you to pull over, um, and help that turtle across the road, put it in the direction it's going and put it um, off the median, uh, excuse me, off the, uh, off the side of the road in the direction it was going. You can, you can, you can help, it, help it out a lot. Um, you can also possibly in your own property, whether it's small or large, if you know you have box turtles there, you could think about leaving an edge along forest as unmowed habitat, at least uh, through, through the summer into the fall. That gives them an area to catch insects, to feed, and to, the, and to nest. Thank you, Scott. We've been talking to Scott Smith, a wildlife ecologist for DNR's Natural Heritage Program. For more information on box turtles in Maryland, go to delmarvaalmanac.com slash nature. Thanks, Dave. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And next week, join us to learn more about our local culture and get connected to our natural wonders. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, and our underwriters for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. If you'd like to become an underwriter for this program, visit delmarvaalmanac.com support. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.